When describing sociable soccer from rogue games, sociable isn't the word that comes to mind. Neither is the word fun. This game might have a decent amount of content for soccer fans, but the content doesn't stack up if the gameplay doesn't hold up. The focus on accessibility makes sociable soccer too simplistic, leaving behind a shallow soccer experience that requires too much time to really get up in the rankings. Throw in elements seen in free-to-play games in this Apple Arcade premium experience, and sociable soccer ends up feeling not really like a premium Apple Arcade game. Players can control with a controller or a touchscreen in sociable soccer, but there are limited options to move the ball downfield. To further elaborate, there is no fancy footwork to trip up or juke opposing players. Trying to maneuver around or run right through a defender is fruitless, as the only way to do that, at least successfully, is to be faster or better at tackling. Passing or chipping the ball to your teammates is the only worthwhile way to move the ball down the field. It sounds obvious, but applying it in-game can be frustrating. The strength of the pass, kick, or chip is determined by how long you hold the button. However, once the input begins, the strength continues to increase until the input or button is depressed. In other words, you can't determine the strength of the kick and then kick. You have to kick and guess how strong the kick is going to be while the ball is airborne. This manner of kicking never clicked with me, and I spent most of the time playing in manager mode. Manager mode has its own set of problems. The AI is not tuned enough for effective play. Offensive players will hold the ball too long and get it taken away. Defensive players will sometimes run aimlessly towards the edge of the field, or the furthest player from the ball will run to try to steal it away from opposing player instead of one that's closer. Manually controlling these players eliminates most of these problems, since you can switch between defenders, but the game moves too fast for me to really get a proper control of the situation on my iPhone. Playing the game in manager mode was the only way I can get any traction in sociable soccer, but playing as a manager in this type of game isn't that exciting. The presentation of sociable soccer doesn't help to improve things either. There is only one player celebration that you will see again and again after each scored goal. The audience is poorly detailed and static, not changing ever, if any, from game to game. Team colors might be scattered about the stadium, but the colors aren't really reflected in the clothing of the spectators. The stadium will also display the logo of your selected team every time. While we are on the subject of teams, don't expect to see famous players like Ronaldo, Messi, and others. While the general colors for the teams are correct, be prepared to be unfamiliar with some of these names like Masi and Ronaldo. Even if their likenesses were in sociable soccer, I doubt the visuals would really be effective enough to represent them. There are plenty of soccer modes to try out, such as online PvP, ranked modes, practice matches, friendlies, and more. There is also a world mode where you can unlock trophies by completing certain goals, like winning the English Cup or the Ocean Nations Cup, but these matches and cups are locked behind your team's rank, which will be touched on later. Until your team that you picked for regular play reaches a specific level, you won't be able to unlock the majority of these cups as well as the majority of those teams, and these cup modes have multiple trophies to unlock. The most egregious aspect of the entire game is the progression in sociable soccer. Upon logging in, you'll unlock a daily reward for your team, either a specific player or a random one. Once you unlock each reward, there is a special unlock at the end of the reward chain. I couldn't quite help but feel this was a leftover portion of Sociable Soccer as a free-to-play title, especially when considering the currency used to upgrade players. Upgrading players is handled in two ways. Extra players in the same position or countries as players in your roster can be fed to your active team to increase their level and stats. The other way players can level up is by being the man of the match or best player, the former in the case of the win, and the latter in the case of a tie. This is random and unfair, because there is no way to determine how a player is selected to get a boost of experience points. 
I have had players score two goals, get passed over for my goalkeeper, who gave up one goal, or a random defender who barely touched the ball. The worst aspect of all of this is that once players have already reached the level cap, they can still be selected for the player's spotlights, effectively wasting all those experience points that could have gone to someone else on my team. New players can be obtained by playing ranked matches, with the outcome of the match determining how many stars you receive. 12 stars are required for a new player, who may or may not be better than the team on your current roster. You can't play these matches continuously to get tons of players every day, as the game limits how many times you can play a ranked match in a day. There is a winning streak mode you can try to unlock new players for your team, but I have never won enough games to get a player that would have been a welcome addition to my roster. Winning games increases the ranking of the player you can unlock. You can claim the player, or attempt to win more games to get a better one. This mode is also time-gated by a number of hours after the current streak ends. With the way that progression is structured in Sociable Soccer, it just takes too long to move the smallest sliver forward. Bland presentation, barely serviceable visuals, poor controls, and a slow rate of progression ruin what fun you could have in Sociable Soccer. The approach to accessibility has not been kind to Sociable Soccer, and it has resulted in one of the most forgettable titles on Apple Arcade. This one out of five soccer game is a dreadful time sink that doesn't have many redeeming qualities. Road Games has had success on the service with titles like Super Impossible Road, but Sociable Soccer is anything but a success for them. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and wish to see more, consider subscribing, turn on notifications, and follow the various social media channels to stay tuned and updated on the latest developments. See you next time.